Kathleen here again. It's been a while. I'm a little bit rusty with the whole recording thing and maybe you can see I'm in a different place. I was kind of getting tired of the upstairs. It's not the most bright and well lit place to show anything off. I have to use quite a bit of lighting and I really felt like I needed maybe a change of scenery. I just try something else out, something fresh and new. We'll see, we'll see where this goes. Anyway, I wanted to share with you the things I've been up to since the last time we visited. I have, oh gosh, I always think of myself as not a very fast knitter. And then I look back at the things I finished. And I'm like, wow, Kathleen, like you got a lot of stuff done. So let's talk about finished objects first. And the first thing I want to talk about are these cute little things. These are my Bernie mittens. And I'll put in the down bar where the pattern came from, because I forget the designer's name. It's actually, oh, all old Crawford, old home Crawford Farm. And she tried actually, she tried a few different patterns out. I think that she found on Ravelry and kind of modified them to be, you know, more, I guess, accurate. Cause some of them looked pretty accurate and some of them looked close, but not quite there. And Bernie's mittens actually were made from old sweaters, old recycled sweaters and some felt. So the palms, this part was, uh, blue, I think, blue felt, and then the back was recycled mitten, and I think they must have added a thumb to it, unless they used the, the sweater for, oh, it's getting bright. Hopefully this isn't blowing out too much. I'm right in front of a window, so we shall see how this one looks. Maybe I'll be deleting it, trying again. I don't really know. Anyway, so here are the mittens, and I think they look pretty good. I think um, if I'm, I'm going to stop saying, um, I caught that in the last video. Way too many ums and way too much looking down. Not gonna happen again. So these are super comfy actually, really cozy. And I've even enjoyed them in the spring with a lighter jacket just to keep my hands warm in the morning in the car on my way to work. And I'm really loving them actually. And I think they're gonna get a lot of use. So I finished these in like, I wanna say I did like two weekends, I think. I think I did one on the weekend and one during the week or on another weekend. I can't really remember. So yeah, so let's see. So those are done. Those are my whips. And the other whip I'm wearing. Do you remember when I dyed that yarn that was the avocado dyed yarn? And I was like, this is the ugliest yarn ever. And I think in my last podcast, I showed where I was at. And I actually did end up finishing it right here. And I did also use the two at a time method to do the sleeves. So it was interesting because I always do two at a time socks. And this time I thought, well, I can do it for socks. Why can't I do it for sleeves? So I did the same thing, I think, on my breathing space. I did, I did the same thing on my breathing space sweater. And I showed that last podcast, I believe, or the one before that. And I, uh, so it was interesting because when you pick up for sleeves, you know, you generally start at the underarm and then pick up, up all the way around and do any, pick up any additional stitches that you need to in the underarm at the same time. So when you're doing two at a time, you're picking up just like doing a sock, just like casting on a, a pair of socks. You pick up the first half of the first sleeve, then you go to the other sleeve and you kind of have to twist it around a little bit to get to the underarm and then pick up the first half of the second sleeve and then pick up the second half of the second sleeve and then go back and pick up the second half of the first sleeve. And meanwhile, you're picking up all your underarm stitches at the same time. And oh, it was like a revelation. No more sleeve island. It was fabulous. So I will totally do that again. I feel like I was a little close. Yes, maybe. You don't really need to see my pores, right? Anyway, um, so yeah, so this is the uh, no frill sweater. And what I love is that the with the addition of the mohair, that ugly yarn that I really didn't like turned into what I would call rose gold color, right? I mean, it kind of looks like rose gold. So let's stand up. 
So let me show you. Voila! So there's the reading space sweater. It's super cozy, super, super cozy. And um, I love the length. It's like, uh, I don't know, baseball shirt kind of thing. And because it has the mohair in it, it's super, super warm. And the wool is non-super wash wool. So um, I'll have to be super careful when I wash it, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's super warm. And like today is 39 degrees right now and I'm getting kind of hot. So I'm gonna have to take this off soon, but we're gonna keep this short, right? So, um, so those are my two finished objects. And my whips that I've got in progress are these socks that I've been working on for a while. Usually socks are like my backup project that I usually like, like they're always on the needles and they're always ready to go when I need it. Like if I'm traveling and riding in a car or on a plane or whatever. And yeah, we're going back to planes, people. And I'm vaccinated. Johnson & Johnson, no problem, buddy. No problem. So uh, I'm very happy to be vaccinated. So these are two at a time socks and these are the Petty Harbor socks and I'll put the pattern down below, the link to the pattern down below. It's on Ravelry. I think it's a paid pattern. I think I paid for it. Anyway, it's really pretty. It's, um, can you see it's like a, like a broken rib sort of, I think you would call it. It's really pretty and I love this yarn. This is polka dot sheep yarn in Melisandre and it's just the most glorious red. I don't know that Maybe back here captures it a little better. I'm not really sure. It's kind of a deep, deep ruby. So it's probably got an over dye of black maybe or charcoals. I don't know how she achieves this like super, super deep, deep red. Like the deepest ruby you've ever seen. It's just like, <clears throat> it's gorgeous. And here's the fun fact. Uh, I'm about to teach my first sock knitting class at my local yarn shop. My Sister Knits is like the yarn shop to go to in my area. It is amazing. And in my next life, I want to be the owners of that shop. <laughs> I want to own that shop. And um, yeah, so um, I'm gonna be teaching this class in May and it's gonna be the two at a time method. So I'm not teaching sock construction. I am teaching the two at a time method. And if you are a local to Northern Colorado and you're interested, I think there are only a few slots and I'm not sure how many are available right now. Um, but if you're interested, the classes will be May 4th, 11th and 18th. So we'll start, we'll cast on, then we'll do a heel, and then we'll finish the foot. So um, I've got my socks ready to go. I'm almost at the point of the heel. So I'll get these whipped up to where I need them to be for the heel. Um, so that I can at least show the cast on method and I'll bring obviously um, just uh, another um, pair of needles and some yarn and uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll buy a skein of yarn from there to show some yarn that they have in the shop and do the cast on with everybody. So that seems to be the trickiest part is the casting on. Some people can't quite wrap their brain around it, uh, but once you get it, you get it. And then of course there's the heel. I do the uh, German short row heel and that's what I'll be showing, but it, this applies to pretty much any heel. And then of course there is getting into the foot and finishing. And so we'll talk about that too. So um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. It's my first class that I'm teaching. <laughs> so we shall see. Um, I would love to teach more classes. I don't know that I'm the most qualified to teach a lot. I consider myself to be maybe an experienced intermediate knitter. I'm not a master knitter, so I've never striven to become a master knitter. You know, I think the Craft Yarn Council offers the master series and you can actually be officially become a master knitter. I love knitting, but like I'm not necessarily looking to become perfect. I actually believe that beauty is an imperfection. So uh, I, probably will never become a master knitter, so I probably would never qualify to teach some other classes, but this is one I know, I do all the time, and I can easily teach. So, 
Those are my socks. Those are works in progress. Then I have just wound my yarn for my Felix cardigan. So let's see. Where's my Felix cardigan? I don't know if you can, I don't want to give away all the details, but yeah. So there's, I'm going to do the Felix cardigan. It's on Ravelry. It is a paid pattern. I will again link that below. And this yarn is a an undyed, uh, chunky weight mohair silk or um, merino silk, and I got it from Dyer Supplier. And my intention had been originally to try the avocado dyeing again. I have probably I don't know fifty avocado pits in my freezer. <laughs> I really need to use them and try again, and I will. But I really need like a, I have a black cardigan, I have a gray cardigan, I have a, like a neutral beigey kind of cardigan, and I didn't have anything light colored, so I'm going to, ooh, that's blowing out. Ooh. It's just an undyed creamy white color, so I'm going to make a Felix cardigan out of this. And it should go pretty quick because it's chunky, so it should go pretty quickly. I have to do my swatching still. I firmly believe you must swatch if you're going to make a sweater, a garment that somebody's going to wear that's not a scarf or a cowl or a hat or mittens. And a lot of people believe in swatching for those things too. As far as I'm concerned, those are swatches. <laughs> but when it comes to sweaters, like I swatched for this one, you pretty much have to if you want to make sure when you spend all the time knitting something like this, and you've invested a lot of money in the yarn in some cases or the effort in the dyeing of the yarn then you want to make sure that it's going to fit you and i have learned how to modify my patterns to make them fit me a little better and i probably will have to do that with the felix cardigan we shall see i don't know i didn't have to do too much with the no frill sweater actually i would totally make i would totally make like a whole bunch of these i would make them as gifts um, they are fingering weight held with mohair which i think makes that DK weight. I'm pretty sure this is a DK weight sweater. And um, it knit up really well. And I did have to go up uh, from a, I think I went from a, I think I went up to a six from a four for the body. I can't remember what it called. Or maybe I went from a seven, from a six to a seven. I think I went from a six to a seven for the main part. And then I think it used a four because I think it calls for a three. And I used a four on the, the cuffs and the neck and the waistband and I just do a regular one by one rib. I hate, I'm telling you, I love the look of twisted rib, but I hate knitting it more than anything. If I can avoid twisted rib, I will avoid twisted rib. Um, I personally, I think this looks fine. I know that a twisted rib makes the, makes this part stand up a little better and, you know, be a little more prominent, but that's not necessarily the look I'm going for. Um, and there's the ums, and I, I hate knitting it. I hate knitting into the back of the stitch and then going right to a purl, knit to the back of the stitch, go right to a purl. Hate it. So I avoid that whenever possible. So the other work in progress I have is I was thinking, oh, I really need to change up what my hands and my arms and my shoulders and everything are doing because I pretty much knit exclusively. And what I wanted to do was make sure that I don't end up with some repetitive use. I'm starting to get a little bit of pain right in here, like arthritis pain, I think, right in here. And I think it's because I'm a left-handed, a continental knitter, and so I hold the yarn in these fingers and tend to do this when I'm knitting and purling. And I think it was time to change it up a little bit and just use different muscles. So I decided to do a... I think it's called a filled granny square blanket. Um, I kind of took a couple different patterns and combined them to make this square. It's well, just a granny square, honestly. It just doesn't have all the holes in it because it's all double crochets pretty much. So look what I have. I have, I'm a member of the Row One Yarns Carnival of Color Monthly Yarn Club. And I love it because 
when I feel like I have a huge stash of yarn, I can like suspend my account for a little bit. And then when I'm ready for some more, I will go back and start it up again, which I love. Like I'm not committed, like gotta do 12 months or whatever straight. Um, that's one of the things I love, love, love. Plus she makes it like a sampler, right? So you're getting one yarn dyer's yarn, but you're getting this like myriad of colors. And I can't remember if you can pick the weights that you get, but I get fingering weight because I love to use them for heels and toes and things like that. And I have like amassed a pretty good size of this and they keep coming every month. <laughs> even with suspending it for a couple months. So um, I have decided instead to make a scrappy blanket. And I was kind of tossing around, you know, what I was gonna do with um, fingering weight yarn for a scrappy blanket, because it is a thin blanket, right? It's not gonna be a heavy, ooh, super cozy blanket. And um, which actually is gonna make it kind of good for like when the air conditioning's on and you, you know, it's the warmer months and the air conditioning's on and in the evening maybe you get a little chilly. So I think it's gonna be really good for on the couch, that kind of thing. So I am using up my Carnival of Color yarn and I am making these squares. This one I didn't like. Okay, so here's the interesting thing. You will see this is, um, can you see that? It's a little bit of a pyramid. <laughs> So these, these down here on this side were my first ones. I haven't crocheted in a long time. Like I've crocheted like an edge or something on some knitting, but I haven't like done a full project of crochet, especially a blanket in a really, really long time, like 15 years, I don't know. And so I was a little rusty, but I started with crochet before I did knitting. I started with crochet, so I know how to crochet. I just, you know, that muscle is a little rusty. So. I had to kind of relearn a little bit and watch some tutorials online. There's some really good tutorials online on YouTube right here, where you are right now in YouTube. There are some really good tutorials of pretty much any stitch that you could do in crochet. So I had to watch them a few times. I actually had to watch and I'll put the tutorial for this specific square. I will put, there we go. That's actually a better representation of the color. For this particular square, I will post, I'll put below the link I used for the tutorial that I used because it saved my life and it got me back into it. And then it was like eating potato chips. You just can't eat just one. Well, guess what? You can't crochet just one, but a lot of things started coming back to me, right? So like, see how I have in the middle, I have that tail there. Well, I forgot, like in the art in knitting, you have to weave your ends in, like you have to have that little tail and you have to then weave it in when you're done. But so I was kind of functioning from a, a knitting perspective, but doing crochet. And then let's see one. Oh, actually was in the second one. The second one I figured out that I don't remember what's the front. This, this is the front. I remembered <laughs> that you can actually catch the tail as you're crocheting around to basically weave it in as you're going. And so none of the others have the tails. They all look like this. So actually, that looks pretty good. That's, yeah, that's the color it is. Check out this one. Whoa, highlighter yellow. Okay, let's start the debate. Is it yellow or is it green? What color is highlighter yellow, yellow or green? You figure that out. And then of course I discovered that some of the little balls of yarn don't quite make enough for two full squares. I had, after I did this one, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go on to the next one. I take a look at two out of the last ball and I started doing two and I was like, ooh, I got to this to like, the last row. I want to say I was like on the last section, the last side of the last row and run out of yarn. So instead what I did was I combined it. Y'all who are crocheters, you're gonna be like, mm -mm, I ain't nothing new. Um, I combined it with like a coordinating color. Sort of coordinates, kind of. Relearning a little bit about color theory too while I'm doing this. Uh, and so I combined that and I was able to get two more out of what that was a little piece that was left. 
and then I got two out of this. And I have a, a little ball left of that one. And then I just kind of started going through my colors. Again, I ran out of this one, had to use another color. This one looks actually pretty good. Had to use another color coordinate. And then I got a whole one out of the coordinating color. And then I got a mirror, excuse me, I got a mirror image, which is pretty cool. I had some stripy yarn. Doesn't quite, doesn't quite work as well with stripy yarn, self-striping yarn. You know, doesn't quite make, doesn't quite make it around. So I probably won't use that again for this project. Lots of other projects, but not this one. And then I got this one. This was yesterday, I finished this one. And yeah, last night I finished this one. And then this, no, last night I finished this one too. <laughs> and then this morning I finished this one. And as I went along, you know, you get more comfortable with the technique. And so my tension was changing. And so my first ones, especially this one, which I think it might have something to do with the weight of the yarn, is bigger. Can you see that? Yeah, you can totally see that. It's bigger. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is my bigger ones, um, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to like, when I lay them out, I'm gonna have to kind of scatter them through strategically so that I end up with a blanket that's hopefully a rectangle, a good rectangle. But my tension feels pretty good now and I actually hold the yarn differently than I do for knitting. I actually wrap the working yarn around my pinky and then it goes through here and then I crochet with it. It gives me better tension, but my tension is definitely improving as I go along. And I kind of expected that, right? So I kind of thought that as I go along, I'm going to see improvement in my technique. So some of the first ones are, you know, going to not be as tight and maybe not as neat. The stitch is quite as uniform and neat. The holes in the center, not quite as uniform and neat, but like here's one that's got almost no hole in the center. So, I mean, it's a handmade blanket. Again, imperfections are beauty. That's what makes things beautiful is imperfection. And so I think that once I place them strategically and I'm gonna be using a color wheel because I have a color wheel. And when I'm ready to place those out, I'm gonna use a color wheel to try and help me balance everything out. Because guess what? I have a lot of different colors of yarn and not all of them. Like I'm picking some of my favorites right now, but not all of them are these like party colors, you might call them. I have some that are very, very neutral, very sedate, very neutral. They'll get scattered through just like these. So hopefully it'll make an interesting blanket. And in the end, I'm going to, when I put them all together, I'm going to use one color of a, um, I don't know if I want to do it also fingering weight or if I want to do DK weight, I'm not really sure. I want to do uh, like a figure out when I place, start placing them all, what would be a good coordinating color to crochet them all together with. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Right now I have, I can do, I can probably get four of them done in a day. I mean, they like take almost no time at all to make. They're so satisfying. <gasps> Doing one square. I keep looking over here. Oh, my iPad's. So I keep looking over myself over here. They're so satisfying because they're small. And uh, I think that, you know, there's something really, it's like making maybe a hat or mittens or something like that. Small projects are super satisfying because you can get them done so quickly. And I can just crank a bunch of these out in an evening and have a pi nice pile. I got a pretty good pile already of squares ready to go. So, I mean, I'm gonna leave, <laughs> I'm gonna leave a lot more than this to make a, you know, a throw size blanket, but I think I'm gonna make a pretty good dent in my stash as more keeps arriving. And it's portable, right? So I can travel with it. I said I'm gonna have some trips coming up, so uh, vaccinated again and ready to travel and actually have some business trips to go on and some personal trips to go on. So I, th the nice thing about these is just these little tiny like, wow, they're like 10 gram size balls of yarn. I can make two pretty much out of. So all I really need, and that doesn't yeah, take me, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. So I can kill some time with a few balls of yarn in a bag and a, and a hook 
And the other nice thing is if I drop it or I put it down or whatever, if I, or just want to put it down, you know, you just pull the yarn from your last stitch, kind of like in a big loop. You take the hook out, you put the hook away, you can put this away. You don't have to worry about your stitches getting lost. You can easily pick up back where you were. Uh, ripping back is not a big deal. It's super easy because they're little projects. Yeah, I've ripped back a few times because, you know, it's 7, 11, 15, no, 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23. <laughs> when you have OCD, something like this is super satisfying because you're counting all your stitches on each side. And yeah, uh, mildly OCD here, and this is a project that just satisfies my soul. So I think that's it for my whips. For my upcoming knitting, well, I'm gonna do the Felix card again, and it's getting to be summer pretty soon, so I'll probably just keep cranking these out because these are, by the way, sock yarn. They're merino nylon sock yarn. For the most part, they're 80, 20, some 75, 25, whatever comes in my row one yarn uh, membership, my color, Carnival of Color Yarn membership. Uh, so it's all, you know, sock yarn. So they're so small that I could easily do these in the warmer months in the summertime, but I kind of, I'm not really a shawl knitter or a cowl knitter. I've done some, but I just, I don't wear them well and I just really have no desire to make any unless like one looks like oh my gosh I have to make that hasn't been one of those in a while I have plenty right now so I don't really need another one if I make another one it'll probably be a really super neutral color the ones I have right now are not really I've won my hip it's called the hipster hip shot my hip shot shawl is good for wearing with jeans it's a nice neutrals I've shown it before but my others are kind of more brightly colored or just not neutrals. And so I do, I would probably benefit from one neutral one. Fingering weight, because it needs to be, and maybe even merino silk, because it needs to be drapey for me. I don't like big, just don't do those well. I get a little claustrophobic. Actually, I can't wear tur turtlenecks for the same reason. Anyway, I digress. So I'm gonna keep this short might inject some video at the end of the hens and what they're up to and yeah it's spring in Colorado so it might be 60 degrees today and a foot of snow tomorrow I mean that's just the way it goes in Colorado so hopefully the big snows are done for now and we're just looking at a beautiful spring we are planting another tree next weekend we've planted seven or eight trees already and we have one more we're gonna plant. And we put in a beautiful patio. Maybe I'll show that in another episode. Maybe I'll actually record outside in another episode when it's nice and not windy outside. Right now it's a little breezy. So I uh, hope you guys are doing well and hope you are enjoying this. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for joining me. If you wouldn't mind subscribing and then hitting the bell so that you get notifications of when the most recent upload is. Hopefully there won't be big gaps between them now and hopefully this surrounding is a good one <laughs> and it'll work and we'll do it again. And yeah, so I hope you're doing well. I hope you're vaccinated and I hope that everyone is healthy in your home and you're looking forward to a wonderful spring and summer. Bye guys. We are gonna go see what the chickens are up to. Got a new patio. Yes. Loving it. That was probably making you dizzy, wasn't it? Sorry about that. We are gonna go out and see what the girls are up to. <laughs> They're kind of like dogs. And... <laughs> Hi, girls! What's going on? You know, they'll, they know that you, when you come out here, you like mean food and they kind of expect you to have like, I don't know, apple cores or strawberry tops or something like that to share with them. Sorry girls, got nothing right now. I'm kind of teasing you a little bit, aren't I? Yeah. Girls have a nice big run. This is where the tree is going in. 
this weekend, so the hole is ready. The girls have jumped in there and all of the gravel in the bottom is from the chickens. You can see where they've been digging on the sides. So then in here is their main run. Got a little shade for the summertime. Gonna be replacing that. See that back fence back there? That's going. That's the next thing that's going. And this fence here is gonna be raised up like another here so they can't we have one hen that likes to jump over so there's the girls let's see if we have any eggs oh, oh, oh. oh we got somebody in a nest she just talked to me so we'll maybe look for eggs another time give her a little peace and quiet that's helen say hi helen then I got the Golden Girls. I have four, actually I have five Speckled Sussex. They're the Golden Girls plus Buttercup. And I have, that's Nemo right there, the black and white um, Wyandotte. She has one bum wing, so we call her Nemo. And that one right there is Hyena. She's called Hyena because when she was young, she made a lot of noise. That's Liz, she is an Americana. Hyena is a uh, black sex lake. Black sex lake. Liz is an Americana. She lays blue eggs. Meatballs an Americana. Her eggs though are a like a beige color. That's sushi. She's also a lion dot. And then we have Hey Hey back there, who is a black sex link, and Pearl, who is a buff Orpington. And Helen's a buff Orpington. They're all great layers. Except for the Americanas, they're all great layers, and we love these guys. It's gonna be great to add this tree here to give them some shade in the summer. So that's a check in on the girls, and we'll catch you guys next time. Okay. Kathleen here again for a quick sec. I've gotta share something with you because it was like total fangirl moment. Oh my god. So, like one of my very top favorite podcasters to watch. Maybe it's because of the kind of the way mom and son kind of play off each other and and their relationship is so awesome. But I follow Happy Knits on YouTube. She's one of my like top, 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 top favorites. And I got to talk to her last week. Oh my gosh, on the phone. So she knit four at a time socks and I was like, I gotta figure out how she did that. Like, I've gotta wrap my brain around that. Since I'm teaching two at a class time sock class, I was like, I wanna be able to share that information in the class. And so last weekend, I asked her if she would call me so I could like pick her brain a little bit. And she did, and guess what? Oh my God, she is like as nice as can possibly be. Like, she's somebody I wanna seriously hang out with and like sit and knit because she's awesome. She's everything you think she is on her videos. Legit, that's her. There, there ain't nothing there that's not really her. She is the nicest person, best person to sit and chat with for a little bit. And total fangirl. I mean, I'm a total fangirl. And that was the most awesome experience. And Yolanda, if you're watching, I love you, sister. And I cannot wait to watch your next episode. And I hope that eventually I get to find myself down there in the Houston area and we get to have a knit night because I would love that. So checking out here, just wanted to add that here at the end. And if you guys get a chance to watch her, she's Yolanda. She, uh, she and her son, Jordan, do Happy Knits on YouTube. So look for Happy Knits. I'll also post a link down below so you can find her. Subscribe to hers as well because... She does a lot of fun projects too, and she's a sock girl just like me, so she does lots of socks. So, yeah, so I just want to check in and say that, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!